Call the council meeting to order. Please be seated. All right, a uh, motion to adopt the minutes of the open council meeting held on August the 28th, 2017. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. A uh, motion to adopt the minutes of the public hearing zoning held on August the 28th, 2017. Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. Proclamations. Uh, Councillor Wang, you are reading out a proclamation in regard to Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, whereas uh, Prostate cancer is the most common cancer to affect Canadian men, and whereas one in seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with the disease in his lifetime, and whereas, as I estimate, 23,100 Canadian men have been diagnosed with prostate cancer last year, and whereas the survival rate for the uh, prostate cancer may, can be over 90 percent when detected earlier, and uh, whereas uh, those with a family history of this disease or those of uh, Afri uh, African and Caribbean descent, descent are at a great risk of developing prostate cancer, and whereas. Uh, Prostate Cancer Canada, uh, Canada recommends that men get a PSA test in their 40s to establish their baseline. Now, therefore, Derek Corgan, Mayor of Burnaby, does hereby proclaim September 2017 as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Burnaby. Here's uh, the promulgation this week. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Wang, and uh, I urge all men to get in and uh, get their prostate checked after they're uh, 50 years old. I know that I have been through regular examinations as I also go through a chemical test and have um, been even through the biopsy process myself, and uh, it is a very important issue, most common cancer for men is prostate cancer, and uh, all of us have to be well aware of this. I know that it's an unpleasant thing to go through, and I know that most men aren't very attentive to looking after that issue, but I wanna urge everyone, it is so curable if it's found early, but it can be so deadly if you don't catch it, so please, do everything you can to make sure that you look after your family by looking after yourself. Get your prostate checked. Make sure your doctor is aware that you're interested in looking after that issue. All right. Now, a motion to resolve into the a Committee of the Whole. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Um, the first report is from the Sustainable City Advisory Committee, and Councillor Dollywell, you're the chair of that committee. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, on behalf of the committee, I move the following two recommendations. That Council approve the implementation approach for the Environmental Sustainability Strategy and Community Energy and Emissions Plan and Phase 1 of Policy Priorities as outlined in this report. Number two, that a copy of this report be sent to the Planning and Development Committee, Financial Management Committee, and Parks and Recreation Culture Commission for their information. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a very quick uh, uh, background uh, on this for this report. Burnaby's Environmental Sustainability Strategy, known as ESS, and Community Energy and Emission Plans, henceforth known as CEEP, were approved by Council in, in November of last year. With this report, with that report, Council also authorized staff to develop an implementation plan which would identify timelines, priorities, lead, and lead responsibility, recommended process, and approaches and resources required to worship this report is about those, um, those uh, commitments that were made at the time last report came to Council. 
The overall vision uh, guiding the ESS and CEP is for Burnaby's, uh, Burnaby to be a global leader in protecting and regenerating ecosystems, supporting a healthy and prosperous community. That vision, this vision is supported by the ESS and CEP goals and strategy. The CEP also, CEP, CEP also includes targets for reducing community greenhouse gases, a city-only target, city-only meant that just what we can do corporately, of 5% below, reduction of 5% below 2010 levels by 2041, and a city plus others, which includes other organizations and citizens, that be a target of 30% below 2010 levels by 2041. As you can see, Your Worship, uh, when we all work together in the city, plus everyone else, uh, could make a big difference to where we are. We were in 2010. And uh, further, Your Worship, uh, in this one, uh, I would just like to outline very quickly recently, uh, our recent and ongoing initiatives, Your Worship, and for uh, under this, uh, this initiative, the ESS and CEP were developed in recognition that the city has already taken action and leadership in a number of areas and will continue to do so as a part of ongoing programs and complementary initiatives. Some examples of past successes in environmental sustainability across the city are provided in the discussion paper that was discussed in the when ES, ESS process was introduced in 2013, and additional recent initiatives are also summarized were in the council report in 2016. Basically, what was uh, taking some further action on climate action charter, and for some progress has been already made with the quick starts since ESS and CEP were approved. And uh, the report lists those things, Your Worship, uh, one basically is the evaluation and improvement. Uh, some also further discussion on reporting of implementation. Your Worship, uh, in this report, the, the committee is recommending that policy phase one of policy development, those are the three priorities listed in, on page 29, Your Worship, that is to begin work on green building, first one is the green building policy, and the second one is electric vehicle policy, and the third one is corporate sustainability. Uh, all those are, are were previously part of the ESS and CEEP the commitments that the council approved. Your Worship, so uh, the idea here is to start on these one, but the timeline would depend with me now and perhaps the following three years because it has to be part of the development department's priority setting uh, and and other things that exist have that now. But but the but the staff will bring forward further reports your worship to council on each one of these policies as they are developed. So that's a brief introduction to this these so I move this report your worship. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dollywell, and uh, I, I want to uh, point out about this report that uh, it is a very ambitious agenda that's being taken on by our staff under the guidance of the Sustainable City uh, Committee, and the, the reason it's so ambitious is because we're growing so rapidly, and to try to decrease our impact on, uh, on greenhouse gases, our carbon em emissions, while we grow, <laughs> is very, very challenging. One would expect to see a constant increase in our impact on greenhouse gases as a result of the growth we're experiencing in our community. But to do that growth while we keep struggling to make sure that we remain below 2010 standards is a, a very high mark to achieve. And uh, I think the report reflects on the fact that, well, we can do our bit in the city of Burnaby through green buildings, through utilizing the methodologies we have available in our zoning process to make requirements on development as it comes through. Um, ultimately, 
We need cooperation at several different levels. We need the federal and provincial governments working with us, and we need citizens working with us to be able to achieve those results. If all of us work together, we can hit a 30% reduction by 2041. But alone, we are still able to maintain no further impact, in fact, a lessening impact on greenhouse gases in our city. And uh, I continue to applaud our staff for making that happen. I think a lot of it is because it's a result of better planning. Uh, it's also the result of better technologies and improvements in technologies that are being utilized. But uh, no one can rest on their laurels. If we want to make a real difference in setting an example for the rest of the world, here in uh, an area of the world where we utilize more energy and more resources than anywhere else, it's important for us to constantly have this in mind while we're implementing public policy. And I can tell you that uh, over the course of the last few years, there has been an intensification of our efforts in that regard to make sure that our policies reflect the most modern attitudes towards avoidance of greenhouse gases. So I wanted to convey my appreciation to staff and also to your committee, Councillor Dollywell, for their continued vigilance in ensuring that we're meeting our objectives under our environmental sustainability strategy, under social sustainability strategy, and under our economic development strategy. All of those programs are being not only looked at by council, by but by this group of citizens who are checking whether or not we're walking the talk. And uh, so far, we've been doing a very good job. All right, with that, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. Next report, uh, item 4B, also from the Sustainable City Advisory Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. On behalf of the committee, I move the following two recommendations. One, that this report be received for information of Council. Two, that a copy of this report be forwarded to Dr. Amir Parmal, Medical Health Officer for Burnaby, Ms. Sheila Finnamore, Executive Director of Burnaby Health Services, Ms. Baljinder Narang, School Trustee Burnaby Board of Education, and Dr. Davidika Swang, Burnaby Division of Family Practices. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, Burnaby Healthier Community Partnership HACP is a friend, partnership of the City of Burnaby, uh, Burnaby School District, Fraser Health, and Burnaby Division of Family Practices. It aims to promote a healthier community through collaboration among those who shape the place and where people live, work, earn, and play. The worship in 2016-17, um, the steering committee met five times. As I said, those are the the four organizations that make up of, of the steering committee, which is uh, um, which directs the work and priorities for this committee for the year. And uh, the steering committee uh, developed a plan for 2016 and has basically covered on two areas. Um, the two priorities uh, continue to be focused. One is the mental health and wellness. And number two is the physical activity and literacy. Uh, over the last year, HCP, uh, uh, Health the Community Partnership, um, had few initiatives which are covered in this report, and I'll quickly touch on them. One is the information sharing and collaboration. Your Worship, that's the most important aspect of, of this working together is to have information from the citizen, from school district, from the staff perspective, and family, um, a division of family practice to be shared. Um, and, and generally information sharing occurred around overdose crisis, uh, local action team, which is the child and youth mental health and substance use collaborator, and dementia friendly community action plan. Those were the three areas that basically were, uh, was information sharing happened. Uh, and there will be further um, report on the dementia friendly community action plan, Your Worship. That was one of the, the initiative that was undertaken by the steering committee. Um, and also uh, now the um, future uh, going forward, Your Worship, uh, I, I should just also touch on something that the 
in in 2016-17 program, Your Worship, the, the committee also undertook Move for Health Day, uh, Community Wellness Fair at Con Confederation Senior Center, Talk and Walk with Your Doc. Um, that was another uh, initiative which uh, promoted uh, a, in, in the evening of May 10th, community members were invited to attend an inspirational presentation for mental and physical benefits of physical activity with Dr. Davidica Swan. So, so all those things are, are done, obviously, with the intention of making sure that uh, the burden be, uh, in, in terms of uh, a health HCP, that we continue to engage uh, citizens as, as best as possible. For the, the year ahead, uh, for the 2017 and 18, the HCP will focus on the following activities. Again, walking challenge, which would be supported through the work that um, builds on what was done in 2016. Um, it's, uh, it should be noted that, that uh, the, the, the Fraser Health has announced that the working, uh, City of Burnaby, working with New Westminster, uh, to make a joint application for uh, to build on successful walking initiatives, and I believe uh, that will be funded through Fraser Health. It looks like uh, 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 there's a fair amount of uh, grant, up to 45,000, I believe, was was uh, received. It was applied jointly and was awarded uh, to continue with some of these walking challenge, which 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 will be undertaken. Um, there's a community uh, component, which is eight weeks, appeared in spring of 2018 around walking challenge. School component is also attached. And then there's a walking festival, a wrap-up event. All those things here, Your Worship, are basically there for Burnaby, just with the following vision in mind, which is Burnaby embraces health and wellness. All Burnaby residents and communities will be supported with knowledge and opportunities that empower them to improve their health and well-being. So this report, Your Worship, is, uh, is presented to Council for information and also with copies to others as listed earlier. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Dollywell. Is there any further discussion? All those in favour, opposed and carried. Item 4C, please. That so this one, this is uh, on the Dementia Friendly Community Action Plan, Your Worship, and recommendations are that Council endorse the Burnaby Dementia Friendly Community Action Plan, that a copy of this report and the Burnaby Dementia Friendly Community Action Plan be forwarded to, for information to, Parks, Recreation and Culture Commission, Burnaby Public Library Board, Fraser Health, the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia, the Voices of Burnaby Seniors, and UBCM, Age Friendly Community Planning and Project Grants Program, and that a copy of the support and the Dementia Friendly Community Action Plan be forwarded to the members of the Burnaby Dementia Friendly Working Group, along with the letter of appreciation from yourself, uh, Your Worship, acknowledging their participation in the working group. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, in December of 2015, the city was advised that, and that it had received a grant of $20,000 to develop the plan. This was um, spearheaded by the Burnaby, uh, Voice, Voice of Burnaby Seniors, Your Worship, and that grant was used to develop this plan. Uh, over the course of 2016 to, and, and up to this point, Your Worship, uh, uh, um, a fair amount of consultation took place. Um, this, that included people from Fraser Health, Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia, Voices of uh, Burnaby Seniors. And, uh, and, and part of that was to, first of all, I guess, create more awareness, your worship, about the dementia, for, um, what currently the way dementia has uh, been, has existed in, in our country, our community. It noted that uh, uh, in 2016, Alzheimer's Society of Canada estimated there were 564 Canadians living with dementia, and this is supposed to perhaps grow to 937,000 by 2031. Uh, and that basically points out to your worship that the, as the demographics are, are getting uh, older, uh, um, 
Burnaby's share of currently 28, Burnaby's number of 2,800 people living with dementia will also continue to grow. Um, most people with dementia, up to 60%, live at home in the community. So the purpose of this report, Your Worship, is to be able to, um, to provide, educate, make people aware uh, who, are, who are care provider who, who, and the dementia patient themselves. So with the, with the help of, uh, of receiving some grant, so this will create uh, a bit of a, um, a little easiness for some people, uh, some people who live with dementia in terms of, uh, of going their day-to-day -day business as happens. So part of the plan, Your Worship, in, in, is called, known as the Community Action Plan, and it's listed in, in, in this report. And, 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 and well, through the discussions, it was determined that if there was a vision to be presented, it, it is it's thus, Your Worship, the city of Burnaby is working towards becoming a more dementia-friendly community where people living with dementia, their families, and caregivers are included, connected, and supported. In developing the plan, it was recognized that the becoming a dementia-friendly community is an ongoing process that requires partnership approach, that this is not the important part, that this isn't a program that will start and end, Your Worship. This is a, a start of recognition on part of our staff, uh, on part of the, the community at large, that as we um, work with our community, and within our community with the dementia uh, patients, that we continue to learn and help. Uh, this plan, uh, was con constructed with the help from uh, uh, Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia and Fraser Health, and uh, over the next few years uh, will continue to be worked uh, to, to include in our city's policies, things um, uh, as we develop facilities that they're accessible, uh, maybe perhaps some, some wayfinding signs throughout the city to see when people are out there who are dementia patient, that they're not lost and confused so they can point to some way to say they can get back. They know this is north, that's south, this is how it is. So all those things, Your Worship, may we take for granted, but they are a huge problem for people who live with dementia every day. So there is a smaller things that are being, little things that are being presented, which the staff will work with all our departments trying to see how we could be more aware of, the, of making our city a dementia-friendly community, Your Worship. Thank you, and I, uh, I think some of these things will help the rest of our citizens at the same time. It's not as if having better wayfinding isn't an improvement for everybody. It just particularly is helpful to people who have dementia. Councillor Jordan. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I'm very pleased to see this report coming forward, and I guess when I saw a call come to the city, and I think we as, uh, applied to be a part of this program, I was thought, oh, I should get involved in that one. <laughs> it's like, so I'm very thankful to Councillor Dollywell and his committee and staff for uh, for taking up this challenge because you can't be it in everything, right? But um, as a lot of you will know, I have a close family member who was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's at the old age of 56. And so it's, I think one of the things in, that this report talks about is uh, giving training to our staff uh, about dementia and Alzheimer's and those things because everybody does think it's a disease of the elderly, but it's not necessarily so. And so it's actually becoming more common that uh, people at a really young age are suffering from this. And so when, when they're lost and confused, um, people may attribute that to some other cause and sometimes not a very pleasant cause. And so, so when you have people that again, or, or as um, young as Sherry, um, who suffer from these, this illness and having it pro get progressively worse over time, it's, it's important that people understand, know how to react, and know how to provide assistance to them. So I'm especially pleased to see that uh, 
The report recommends that our staff get education and training about dementia and that we develop policies, especially in our more, more public access facilities, obviously, where, uh, where uh, these members of our community attend to and so that they know how to deal with and react to um, the sometimes unusual behavior <laughs> exhibited uh, by, by persons suffering from, from the, the whole spectrum of dementia type disorders. So I'm uh, very happy to see the report coming forward, uh, feeling tremendously guilty that I wasn't part of um, the input of it, but I'm, I'm happy to see it and um, support the actions going forward. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I have watched the decline of your sister Sherry over many, many years, and uh, it's a very difficult thing for any family member to go through is to, is to watch their, their sibling uh, at a very young age be impacted by early onset Alzheimer's. Um, it's devastating, in fact, and uh, I, I know that I had my, my uncle who never got to enjoy his retirement because he had uh, early onset dementia. And in fact, uh, I can remember Councillor Evans, who was a tremendous councillor for the city of Burnaby, having to leave earlier than he would have wanted to as a result of uh, the progression of dementia. So, you know, it touches each of us in different ways. I Absolutely. doubt there are many people around who haven't been touched by dementia, Alzheimer's in, in one of its forms. And uh, this is coming out of our social sustainability study in which we have extrapolated our inclusiveness to try to be very broad in looking at the spectrum of people in our community. And this is a a hidden disability that people suffer that may not be obvious immediately, but can end up confining someone in their home so that they are in effect powerless to be able to enjoy the benefits of the community around them. And oftentimes because of the difficulties in coping is their caregivers are reluctant to take the dementia patient out and to engage them in the community more understanding on the part of citizens, on the part of our staff, on the part of people who are engaging with dementia patients can improve the quality of their life over the, the last years that they have. And, uh, and we often know that uh, it's a progressive disease that is going to impact people sometimes to the degree where eventually they forget how to be able to do the normal body, bodily functions. And so, it requires all of us to be understanding and, and particularly to be understanding of those caregivers who are struggling with this as part of their daily routine, as part of their life. Because uh, a patient who is suffering from dementia, it can be a very high demand on a person who is with them. So I, you know, I think it's, uh, it's important that we do what we can as a society to be able to, to help. We're not going to be the perfect solution and we're not going to be able to solve everything. But again, it's an area that our staff can be aware of and, and can try to help where possible. And uh, it doesn't, when you think about the things being recommended, so easily we look at, at putting in curb cuts to make sure people with a visible disability can get around in our city, but we don't necessarily think about making our, our street signs more available to people so they can get a better idea of where they are. And those little things that we can do to make a difference are so important to people who are dealing with the everyday problems that are associated with dementia. And for those of us who've had it touch our family or our friends, I think we're very aware of it and, and are very supportive of making sure this, these programs are put into place. Um, and I appreciate the government giving us additional monies to be able to do these studies because it's not something you would have necessarily taken the initiative on without the encouragement that was provided by the province in looking for ways to support it. Councillor Johnson. Your Worship, I, um, I would like to compliment the committee. I also have a, a parent that had dementia. And um, it's, it's a very isolating disease, both, both for the person affected and, as you say, the caregiver or spouse. I'm really pleased to see uh, the recommendations where we're including some facilities in our park system so that both 
the person with the disease can have a calm space because they need calm and uh, that there's an, an ability for the caregiver or spouse to have a bit of a respite for 10 minutes or so while that person's enjoying the nature of the of the park or, or recreation facility it's a scary disease um, people people that don't even, you know get to the point where they don't even know their kids they don't know their spouses they don't know whoever and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty scary to both the person who has the disease and everybody else so I think this is really a good positive step on the city's behalf if you've seen the the look of terror in the eyes of someone who has dementia when they they're out of control where they're lost is that it, uh, yep. it's heartbreaking yep. especially at Costco I must say yeah Councillor Daliwa. Just, just very quickly, Your Worship, which I forgot to mention, one of the things in this one is also creating awareness for the general public as well, because there's some stigma to this as well. But the purpose of this one is to eliminate that part of it. This isn't something that people should be somehow feel that, that, that they are at fault because they caught this disease and people are not talking about it. So one of the things is to create awareness from the general public as well to do what they do, that, that they offer, that this is, this is, this is not an aging thing that, that everybody's going to go. This is a disease that can uh, uh, strike anybody at any age, and it needs to be also recognized that as such, and, and we all offer uh, uh, any help that we can through actions, through learning, and through providing more courageous words to the caregivers that this is something where they got to get that people enjoy their life and, and, and have quality of life while they suffer through this. I just want to quickly make that point, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Dollywell. And, uh, and it is important that uh, we use this bully pulpit to be able to talk about these issues. You know, the idea that we're here in council and talking about the realities of dementia in people's lives and saying the small role that cities can play to be able to help, whether it's through parks and recreation or other departments, those are, are some of the steps that can be taken to try to assist people in dealing with what is a devastating disease. So we appreciate the work that our staff is doing and we appreciate the work the committee did in examining this issue. All right, and with that, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Moving on to the city manager's report. Item one is to seek council approval of capital funding to pursue demolition of 7252 Kingsway. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item two, and this is the demolition of 7282 Kingsway. And this is approval of capital funding to pursue demolition of 7282 Kingsway. Questions called. Um, both these items are older buildings that are beyond us utilizing them. Um, it is important that we are able to avoid the additional expenses required to be invested into these buildings when we know that eventually the buildings are going to be torn down and that new structures will be built. Um, so moving this forward uh, is avoiding what have been a series of problems in the community. We do not want derelict buildings from the city to become problematic for residents in the community, and that's where this was going. So elimination of these buildings needs to be able to do new things with that property is very important. So with that, ready for the question. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item three, this is to provide council with a Just um, very quickly, I, 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 I think I was trying to follow what has transpired over a few years, um, and, and then I got lost in this one. I just very quickly, I know the director of planning, building and planning would know top of his head. So, so the idea here is that this is being consolidated to a, a, the, the previously what was already sort of building up to a certain capacity. Uh, this doesn't change the capacity as such, but 
the request is to open up to the, to the balconies, basically. Is that the essence of the whole thing? Your Worship, the, the, the basic component of the application is the casino has one liquor license that covers the entire facility. So you are correct that there's no expansion of that liquor license capacity in this application. But they want to create a second or a individual license for the persona's restaurant so it can operate under one license with the balance of the existing license covering the casino. So that's the, the first part is just to separate the persona's restaurant off from the main license in order to allow uh, family dining, uh, the ability for families to bring children into that restaurant during before 10 p.m. at night. The other aspect of it is they're looking to formalize a permission to have background music on all of the patio. So no amplified music and no live music on the patio, but the ability to sit outside and hear um, uh, music coming over a speaker system while still being able to carry on a normal conversation at your table. Well, thank you for that, uh, um, uh, Director. So, so this will go to a consultation public. Uh, would there be a hearing on it or just, just consultation? We, we follow the normal notification process that we follow for public hearing, but there's not an actual hearing. The submission of comments is made to the department and then we report that back to council. Thank you very much. I can tell you Yes, it was a, yeah, thank you. Um, no, uh, I, I understand that, um, as, as uh, the Director of Planning stated that, for example, because the casino access is to restricted to anyone 19 and over, so then that means that the restaurant facilities can't be used because you can't get to them without going through the casino. And so that's uh, the issue. I think that what they're trying to do is make the personas um, area, which I think most of council has attended to, and the, and the patio there, a family friendly, as per we now know the um, liquor licensing allows Mayor Corrigan to bring his brand new grandbabies into the pub, <laughs> right? And so this is, this is legal now in the province, but but because you can't get to the restaurant without going through the casino floor, that's not permitted. So, um, so I think that's what at least part of this application has to do with, so that they can open up access to Personas restaurant and the patio area, and then hotel guests with children can take them there for food and entertainment, as anybody else in the community could. But, but the way the liquor license is divided up right now, it's not possible to do so. Seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Moving on to bylaws, Councillor McDonnell. Thank you, Your Worship. For second reading, I move that bylaw 13785 be read a second time. Second motion. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. 
For reconsideration and final adoption, I move that bylaw 13786 now be reconsidered, finally adopted, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the corporate seal affixed thereto. Second motion. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. New business. Is there any new business? Councillor Balco. Uh, just very quickly, Your Worship, in the purple pages, there's a letter from the, uh, I didn't even know this body existed, the International Airlines Council of Canada, decrying the uh, potential privatization of uh, airports in this country. And I know that Councillor Johnson raised the issue uh, when it initially uh, came forward many months ago, but apparently all the all the protests uh, around the country in regards to privatizing our airports hasn't had any uh, impact on the uh, current uh, federal government and uh, I don't think it's a stretch because wherever this has gone forward uh, city or uh, countries with ports Australia for example started privatizing their ports and before you know it everything that was built with uh, public monies was turned over to the private sector so uh, there's acknowledgement in there, uh, Your Worship, of the letter you sent uh, and uh, the minister, uh, Mr. Garneau, uh, I don't know that uh, you were happy with his response, but anyways, at least there's acknowledgement of receipt of the letter. Uh, but again, I, I think we should keep an eye as uh, on this one, and we're all going to, or most of us are going to UBCN, and I'm sure this is going to be a topic there, if not, if not at the FCM, whenever that comes around. So thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, and I, you know, I, I wrote the letter in regard to particularly the Vancouver airport, but I think our position is similar in regard to other airports across the land. I don't know why there is such a rush by the neoliberal element to sell all of the assets that Canadian people have built up over many, many, many decades. It it is unseemly the fact that there is this this desperation to replace actually having tax dollars support the system with selling the assets that we have and saying somehow this is a magic solution. We've seen the sale of so much property by the provincial government right across British Columbia and now we're seeing the federal government look at opportunities to be able to sell off more and more of the assets that all of us have enjoyed. And in many cases, these are money-making assets. Airports make them money as a result of the work that's been done by the by the uh, the individual boards to make sure that they're economically viable. They've been able to pay the government lease payments, and there's a continuing source of revenue that's going into the government. Plus, the government ultimately has the control of what happens with those airports, which is absolutely critical in ensuring the public interest in transportation like airlines coming into our country. To lose the ability to control that, to be able to implement good public policy by turning it over to the private sector, just seems to me to be irresponsible. And I, I don't even know why this subject is being discussed in Ottawa. And uh, I've been kind of surprised that there hasn't been nearly the kind of resistance you would expect from the opposition parties in regard to that probably because the Conservatives have the same policy of sell anything that isn't nailed down. But New Democrats should at least be standing up on this issue and saying it's unconscionable to sell these assets. So I, I hope people out there are paying attention because there seems to be a, a failure on the part of the public to recognize that once sold, these will never come back into public possession. Once they've been privatized, we all know that the international trade, trade agreements will not allow you to bring them back into the public sector. So once it's lost, it's lost forever. And I, I don't know why people, why this generation is so prepared to allow the things that were built by their, their ancestors, by the previous generations, allow them to simply be sold for political gain in the present because that's all it is, is, to not actually make people pay for what they're doing, but to simply sell an asset that's irreplaceable. It doesn't make any sense. All right. And with that... Um
All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you very much, Council and staff, and thank you to everyone who was with us tonight.